I'm going to talk about configuring this 9XR for use with this TBS Discovery and the Nozolite. Now, Soldier 53 Flyer sent me this and I told him I'd be happy to uh, get him up and running. And this is my first experience with the 9XR. I've heard several good things about it. If you're not aware, it runs, I believe, a derivative of ER9X firmware. And so I'm hoping this will be a little bit more intuitive than the 9X. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is just go in here and I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit menu and I'm going to delete this model. So we're going to start from a fresh model, number one, and then I'll go ahead and go into that. And now we're going to begin the configuration starting from scratch. And so I have everything already connected, the receiver wired up to the Nozzle light, but let me point one thing out if you're coming from the world of the 9X. Normally on the receiver, you have aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder in that order. So re receivers over here and you have them wired into the corresponding channels on the NASA. And everything works great. That's actually how I wired up this 9XR, but I came to find out the channel ordering is different. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to go into our model settings. Now if we go to menu number five, you'll notice that channel one is throttle, then aileron, elevator, and rudder. So channel ordering is different, and here's what that actually does when you connect your NASA to the assistant. Now looking at the NASA light assistant, you'll notice that if I give throttle up, see the aileron slider moving, and you'll notice that if I move the elevator up and down, throttle moves. We'll get that reconfigured on the 9XR. Okay, so let's go ahead and set these channels up. Now it, you very well could just go and reconnect your leads to be throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder coming out of your receiver, but figured it'd be easier and just a good thing to know how to do this. So we're gonna go into channel one, I'm gonna press and hold menu, and I'm gonna change that to aileron, and I'm gonna hit exit. Then I'm going to go down and hit menu again. And we're going to change this to elevator. And exit. We're going to change channel 3 to throttle. Hit exit. And then we have rudder there. So that should be our settings. The AETR going into the NASA. So I'm just going to hit exit. And we're going to go back to the menu. Exit again and we're out. Okay, now we're reconnected to the assistant and we're seeing what we'd expect. Our throttle, rudder, elevator, aileron. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick calibration and then we're going to move on to uh, setting up flight modes. Okay, for the three position switch you'll notice the slider is all the way over here. Now what we want to do in this video, we're going to do GPS as the default position. That's GPS attitude. Then we're going to have manual as the second switch and then fail safe as the third switch position. Now if you recall when I set up this model I just deleted it and created a new uh, profile. Well, these are the default settings that come with your model. Now we already did the aileron elevator throttle rudder setup so you'll see that channel 5 in this template, I guess this is a template, is set to gear and channel 6 is set to our three position switch. So we have channel six from the receiver going into the U port on the NASA. The up position is considered ID zero, ID one, and ID two. We're gonna set the mixes for each one of these so that we get our proper flight mode. And what I'll do initially is I'm gonna go down to this channel and I'm gonna select these pre-configured settings and I'm gonna delete them so that we can start from scratch on that. So I'm gonna go up one hit delete. So now you can see that our channel 6 is empty so I'm going to go down to it and I'm going to press and hold menu and what we want our source to be for this initial one is we're going to set that to half. Now that actually refers to the range of motion that you get for that channel so there's half and full. We're going to use half. We'll leave the weight alone and then we're going to go down to switch and we're going to set this to ID 0 now I'm going to hit exit and that's the first switch position and what I'll do next is I'll hit down and I'm going to hit menu again and we're going to set this at half again and I'm going to go all the way down and we're going to set this to ID 1 hit exit now you'll see we have ID 0, ID 1 
Now we haven't actually configured the mix values yet. We're just getting the switches set up. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit menu again. We're going to set that to half again. And I'm going to go down to ID2. Hit exit. Now you can see our three positions. We're going to go ahead and set our normal ID0 position. And we're going to adjust the weight. I'm actually going to move this down. And what, we'll, what we should see is the slider move into uh, GPS mode. Our GPS is now highlighted. So I'm going to leave that value. So that looks like a weight of 70. I'm going to go ahead and hit exit. And now we're going to go to the next switch position, which is right there. And that's also known as ID1. Hit menu. We're going to adjust the weight to move that slider over into manual mode. As I bring that down, we're now in manual mode with a weight of minus 62. Now let's go down to ID2. And we want to move this into fail safe mode with a value of 35. Now what's cool about this, if you come from a 9x background, is I can set these values right here without actually having to go into the settings for that mix. Let's give this a try. Now we're in our default switch position, which you can see in the background we have GPS. Now I'm going to go ahead and toggle to ID1. You can see we're in manual and then ID2. We're now in fail safe. Okay, now let's give this a quick bench test. Now you'll notice I don't have props on. I've learned many times the hard way that just testing on the bench with props on is kind of a disaster. And you'll notice the NASA VU indicator is blinking properly. You see the orange just saying we're indoors so it doesn't have a good GPS fix, but uh, we are in GPS mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and arm this. Everything appears to work properly. Now let me go into manual mode. Now we should be able to fly in manual mode. And then lastly, we'll know from the LED indicator that we're now in fail safe mode. And that was our switch position all the way down. So if I go all the way back up, I'm now in GPS attitude mode. So I'm now in a position where I can go give this a test flight, see how everything works out, and, and test our different flight modes. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed with the 9XR. Now I hope it is true, and I'll find out soon, related to ER9X, this being a derivative. I'll be installing the Smarty Parts board and load it with the ER9X firmware on my Turnigy 9X. And I'll be able to do a comparison with what I've been using on this 9XR. And that was my first go with configuring the 9XR with the NASA Lite. And until next time, thanks for watching.